the last 20 years, the Minneapolis Institute of Arts has assembled a large and important collection of Miao and other ethnic minority costumes and silver jewelry. The Miao are one of several ethnic minorities living in the subtropical mountainous zone of southwest China. Other groups include the Yi, Dong, Shui, Yao, and Bo Yi. For over 3,000 years, these ethnic groups have migrated from the north into the western provinces of Hunan, Guizhou, Yunnan, and Guangxi. The limestone mountains in this region resist cultivation, and farming is difficult. They farm their small terraced fields and wet rice paddies by hand with the help of oxen and water buffalo. This method of farming has made them relatively self-sufficient. It has also isolated them from the majority population of China well into the 20th century. The Miao live in scattered stone and wood villages built into the mountainside. As subsistence farmers, they work long, hard hours, and they barter and trade for goods in open-air markets reached from their villages by foot. They own virtually no land and little tangible wealth. Their most valued possessions are richly woven and embroidered festive costumes and magnificent silver jewelry. The costumes, hairstyles, and headwear reflect their family status and wealth. Their textiles have come to represent the different ethnic identities within the Miao. For this reason, outsiders use costume characteristics to identify certain Miao subgroups, such as the short skirt Miao, the long skirt Miao, long horned Miao, red band Miao, flower Miao, and white Miao. Village women are responsible for making their family's everyday clothing, blankets, and festive attire. This role includes growing hemp and flax to produce bast ground fibers. It also includes growing cotton and indigo for weaving and dyeing. It further includes batiking, embroidering, and making robes, skirts, hats, shoes, trousers, children's clothes, and baby carriers. The quality of these textiles reveals the maker's talents. They are a source of great pride for the Miao. The Miao woman's character, technical skill, discipline, and artistry are expressed through her festive attire. She wears her costume on the most important social occasions, like weddings, ancestor ceremonies, and festivals. Girls learn to embroider beginning at seven or eight years of age. Their mothers and grandmothers teach them the specific colors, patterns, techniques, designs, and garment cuts that are unique to their clan or village. In time, they may learn to weave using body tension or treadle-operated frame looms. They may also master the wax-resist dyeing technique called batik. The transmission of textile knowledge from parent to child helps ensure cultural continuity and the specific stylistic patterns that identify each clan. It is thought that future husbands judge Miao girls by their ability to weave, embroider, and batik elaborate costumes. Without a doubt, traditional festive costumes have become the Miao culture's most striking feature. The style of a Miao woman's costume varies tremendously from village to village. The costume also varies by the skill of the maker and the wealth of the owner. Nonetheless, traditional Miao costumes tend to reflect a basic theme. A long sleeve jacket is typically worn over a full pleated wraparound skirt. The length of the skirts varies greatly. Many groups use aprons. A few groups wear trousers, but most cover their lower legs with decorated leg wraps or gaiters. Embroidered shoes and boots used to be standard attire, but they are seldom seen today. Decorative sashes, belts, and streamers are accessories seen in several styles. Other popular accessories include decorated purses, yokes, and even shawls. The Miao hairstyle also varies from village to village. Elaborate hairdos sculpted with combs and silver hairpins reflect and uphold the village style. Hairdos are often worn with special hats and turban-like head wraps. 
Such headwear acts as one of the most important social identifiers. Women working in the fields or going to market will, at the very least, wear the style of headwear unique to their clan or village. The Miao baby carrier has the highest status of all traditional Miao textiles. The baby carrier is designed to protect the young from a physically dangerous and often unsanitary farm environment. The carrier secures the child to its parent's back with a sturdy, highly decorated cloth panel. This panel connects to long ties that crisscross over the adult's shoulders, under the child, and around the parent's waist. The Miao and Dung minorities believe that the carrier is a physical symbol of the tie between mother and child. The baby carriers are often decorated with talismans and symbols believed to protect the child from harm. As with costumes, baby carriers reflect specific village styles, but they are often superior works of embroidery, weaving, applique, and batik. Most baby carriers are textile showpieces. They demonstrate a woman's skill in needlework, her love for her child, and her status as a parent. Most ethnic costumes show an overall aesthetic coordination between the various parts. Jackets, skirts, aprons, and baby carriers will usually have similar geometric or pictorial designs, and they will use the same colors, materials, and embroidery, applique, and weaving techniques. The result gives the outfit a certain harmony. The knowledge of handmade clothing and the village styles and techniques reflected in them were once passed from mother to daughter, grandmother to granddaughter, and older sister to younger sister. But that may come to an end as China modernizes. It is likely that the ethnic minorities will use more and more commercial clothing, and younger generations may gradually lose interest in the time-consuming task of producing the rich handmade clothing that has traditionally provided their visual identity. Miao and Dong's silver jewelry is nothing short of spectacular. Silver is a major component of a bride's costume. It also embellishes festive wear in many villages. For hundreds of years, jewelry has been used to dispel evil, enhance beauty, and announce the wealth and social status of ethnic minority men and women. Men are generally responsible for making silver jewelry. Silver jewelry is cast, engraved, and chased with popular floral, geometric, and figural designs. Like costumes, silver ornaments vary from village to village and reflect the community's fashion and wealth. Ornate headdresses made of thin sheet silver have recently grown in popularity. Certain village styles incorporate thin silver plaques sewn directly onto the clothing. A bride traditionally wears silver earrings, chain necklaces, hair combs, bracelets, sash hangings, and talismans. Parents who can afford it spare no expense in adorning their eligible daughters with silver. Festivals are an important part of Miao culture. Festivals are held during the off-season and they provide an opportunity for social interaction between villages of the same lineage and costume type. The festival's main purpose is to introduce unmarried boys and girls to prospective marriage partners. Many festivals take place over several days. As a result, families traveling from remote regions often camp out in the hills. They come prepared for the festivals. They bring pre-cooked food, drink, and they pack festive costumes and musical instruments. The Miao are well known for their dancing. Unmarried girls usually perform the dances. These girls perform a slow-moving circle dance to the sounds of bronze and wooden drums and Lusheng reed pipes made from bamboo. Male elders and married women wearing festive attire provide the music. They may also join in the dancing. The dancing is a prime opportunity for the girls to show off their exquisite handmade costumes and elaborate silver jewelry.
The Miao and Dung are musical cultures. Their antiphonal singing is highly developed. The Miao have songs for courtship, welcoming guests, serenades, and various rituals. Traditional choral and solo singing are very common. They are performed on special occasions, in the villages, and at festivals. Festivals almost always include open markets. Some women sell their own handmade decorative fabrics and silver ornaments. Vendors sell food, herbal medicine, mass-produced clothing, blankets, silk yarn, dye stuffs, and small metal tools. Other festival entertainments include horse racing, water buffalo fighting, cockfighting, and dragon boat racing. Today, some festivals even feature events like beauty contests, basketball, volleyball, and table tennis competitions. Most courtship festivals are known as Lusheng festivals. The name comes from the bamboo pipes played during the dances. At all these events, it's hard to miss the festive costumes and magnificent silver jewelry. Large numbers of Hmong refugees immigrated from Laos to Minnesota after the Vietnam War. More than 40,000 Hmong now live in this state. The Hmong are distant ancestors of the Miao of southwest China in Guizhou province. They have many common attributes. These commonalities include festive costumes, silver jewelry, large festivals, and respect for ancestors. They also share another thing. Both cultures are in a state of rapid cultural transition the Hmong from westernization, and the Miao from modernization. The Minnesota Hmong community still celebrates New Year's with a large three-day festival. The festival is held each winter in a St. Paul auditorium. Thousands of Hmong attend. Many of the women and girls wear festive dress, but most of their costumes are machine-made, not hand-woven and embroidered. Organized games are similar to those in China, the games introduce eligible girls to potential mates. Families in festive dress pose for portraits in front of painted backdrops of Asian mountain scenery. Teenagers turn up to hear Hmong rock bands. The open air market is probably the closest approximation to Miao festivals in Guizhou. It is set up Asian style on the floor. It sells clothing, recorded Hmong music, videos, herbal medicine, and machine-made jewelry. The villages and festivals of Guizhou province show similar changes. China's increasing prosperity has led to fashion changes in both traditional and modern attire. Village markets sell sewing machines, plastic buckets, synthetic dyes, machine-made head wraps, off-the-rack clothing, and blankets. Handmade blankets, traditional costumes, and baby carriers are harder to find than in years past. They are being replaced by synthetic fabrics and machine-made textiles. Young Miao girls are increasingly influenced by the clothes they see on television. Many girls now prefer modern fashion to traditional dress. They wear their hair in a simple ponytail instead of a traditional elaborate hairdo. Education is also changing the Miao. More and more Miao children are attending school. Many of them are then leaving their villages. They are moving to work in towns and cities where traditional costume and silver jewelry seem out of place. Better roads and bridges through the mountains are bringing an increasing influx of cell phones, modern appliances, and outside people, including tourists. Such modernization is dramatically altering the once remote minority districts. A recent example of modernization was the 2008 Miss Miao contest held in Shidong. The runner-up wore camouflage attire and danced to Western-style rock music. She placed ahead of eight other contestants. Those competitors were dressed in colorful traditional Miao festive dress and sang traditional Miao songs. With modernization comes Westernization. And with both come a profound transformation of traditional Miao and Hmong cultures. The minority nationalities are now adapting to explore new economic opportunities. What they are losing, however, is their centuries-old traditions. 
This loss will make the collection of Chinese minority costumes in silver, now preserved at the Minneapolis Institute of Arts, all the more important.